You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who Art Ed? Try to spice it. Who Art Ed? Mr. Wood, Art Ed, me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. I thought it was a great start. Hello and welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at Ai Weiwei. Ai Weiwei was born in 1957 in Beijing, China. His father was Ai Qing, a poet, but Communist Party officials accused his father of being on the wrong side politically. The family was exiled from Beijing. I guess it seems like they were in a remote area in the north, and then they were able to return to Beijing in 1976 at the end of the Cultural Revolution. In 1978, Ai Weiwei went to the Beijing Film Academy, but it wasn't really the best fit for him. He was more interested in the avant-garde art scene rather than producing films. So in 1981, he left China for the U.S. He came to New York to study at Parsons. I feel like every great artist of the late 20th century just had to go through New York at some point. He started in painting, and then he moved on to sculpture. He was also inspired by ready-mades. The ready-made is this concept of taking found objects and just recontextualizing them. The most famous example being, of course, Marcel Duchamp's Fountain. I'll link that episode in the show notes. In 1993, Ai Weiwei returned to Beijing to visit his ill father. This is where he starts exploring the traditional roots of Chinese culture along with modernization. Ai Weiwei took a Han Dynasty urn and painted a Coca-Cola logo on it. He took antique furniture from the Ming Dynasty and broke it apart, then rearranged the pieces, transforming the functional furniture into something non-functional. Now, if you're thinking this sort of iconoclasm, taking down and destroying historical artifacts, is going to be upsetting to quite a few people, you're right. Ai Weiwei has definitely ruffled some feathers throughout his career. His name is actually a blocked search term on Chinese social media. Still, for all of that, I think you would be mistaken if you were to think that Ai Weiwei is somehow anti China in his work. In that pivotal trip back to Beijing in 1993, when he was visiting his father, his father told him to think of China as his home. And Ai Weiwei took that as sort of license to be himself, to explore his own ideas, and to do what he wanted in his homeland, to be comfortable in his home but also to seek to push his home nation to improve, to grow, to evolve, to not get stuck in the roots of the past. Another little fun fact about some of the bold work that Ai Weiwei has created. In 2008, for the Beijing Olympics, China constructed a giant stadium. Ai Weiwei actually helped to design the stadium, and while it's commonly referred to as the bird's nest, the actual inspiration was a toilet seat. He is an artist who's worked in all sorts of disciplines. In addition to the sculptures, he's even put out music. He put out a music video for a heavy metal song that was all about his incarceration. Whether through his conceptual art or speaking truth to power, Ai Weiwei is bold and unflinching. Perhaps it's those nerves of steel that led him to become a top-rated blackjack player back when he was living in the U.S. My understanding is, in the 1990s, he was a highly rated blackjack player, and the casinos in Atlantic City would actually send limos out to pick him up from New York so that he could play in their tournaments. While he has led an interesting life, let's face it, we're here to talk about the art. One of his most famous pieces, and probably among the most labor-intensive, was a a 2010 installation of 100 million hand-painted porcelain sunflower seeds. He said growing up in China, even the poorest would share sunflower seeds as a treat. 
Simultaneously, communist propaganda would often depict Mao as the sun and people as sunflowers turning towards their leader. So Ai Weiwei was using sunflower seeds as a symbol that works as a connection to both the Communist Party and his personal childhood memories. It's interesting because each seed is extremely realistic, individually crafted and unique, but they're arranged in a neat rectangle filling an industrial space in the Tate. It becomes a vast sea of seeds that all look the same. It feels like a critique of the push for conformity, censorship, the homogenizing influences on society. He's using a fond memory from his childhood and a symbol of the government's propaganda in order to subvert that propaganda and call it out. It's not lost on me that the material used here is porcelain as well. China has a long history of using porcelain. I believe the oldest known pottery fragments actually came from a cave in China. But porcelain, that thin, delicate, but beautiful clay work that China was really known for, that dates back to the Han Dynasty around 200 BCE. And so this piece is at the same time somewhat traditional and subversive. While the piece was on display at the Tate in England, Ai Weiwei was arrested. They charged him with tax evasion, but he says it was over politics. He'd been running a blog investigating and calling out corruption and cover-ups, particularly with regard to the 2008 Olympics. His blog was shut down, his passport was taken, he wasn't able to leave the country for about four years. Of course, the international community rallied behind him, creating pressure for his release. In 2015, he got his passport back. Now, as just one final, just funny little fact about this piece, I guess while it was on display at the Tate, a group of conceptual artists added four actual sunflower seeds to the collection of 100 million porcelain seeds on display. They took slingshots to send the four actual seeds into the sea of porcelain sculptures and then quietly put up a sign saying, Sunflower Seeds on Sunflower Seeds. Well, I gotta say, I am generally not a fan of altering someone else's artwork without their consent. Something tells me Ai Weiwei was totally fine with that one and probably would have grabbed a slingshot and a seed himself had he been there at the moment. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.